Traveling without any checked luggage is effective and liberating. But if you haven't done it before, it can seem impossible or at least extremely limiting. So in this video, I'll show you how two people can share one single bag without sacrificing anything. After all, if two can share one single carry-on, you, as an individual traveler, can certainly do it with ease. Now, I didn't just do this two people one carry-on trip for the sake of a challenge. I did it because my mother was unfortunately hit by a car while walking, requiring a hip replacement, tremendously painful recovery that's still nowhere near done, and her mobility has unequivocally been changed forever. Everything starts with a bag, and although I have been using the original packed travel backpack for quite some time, Packed was kind enough to let me test a pre-production prototype of their version 2 for this trip. And just a quick side note, I will be putting my money where my mouth is, and buying one for one of you fine folks, so be sure to stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'll announce the giveaway entry rules. But for this trip, everything was broken down by the two sides of the clamshell design. This side for my mother, and this side for me. Everything for both of us sat into four categories. Clothing, tech, hygiene, and support. The biggest hurdle for first-time one-bag travelers is, by a huge margin, clothing. There are a few different solutions to crossing this barrier, but for me, as someone who is traveling for business at least 100 days a year, high-quality merino wool in the context of packing light, it resists wrinkling like no one's business, and most importantly is naturally antimicrobial so in practical purposes does not smell and actually stays quite clean after days and even weeks of consistent wear in between washes. But for the 8 hour flight, and in fact for most of the trip, on my body I had unbound joggers and one of their t-shirts for comfort, as well as their compact travel hoodie in case it got cold on the airplane. Because this was a trip celebrating my mom's retirement, in case we went to a nicer restaurant for dinner, I decided to pack their ridiculously soft and stretchy merino button-up, as well as their merino travel pants. For sleep, and as a backup outfit, I packed this Airs and t-shirt by Uniqlo and these Nike running shorts. With their joggers and t-shirt on my body, as you can see, all of the rest of these pieces fit inside of the Sipway packing cube comfortably. And with the compression zipper, made it into a nice, neat package placed at the bottom of my half of the packed travel backpack. To wrap up my clothing, since the forecast said it might rain in some parts of Switzerland that we'd be going to, this North Face rain shell tied it all up and I will share in a few moments where it got packed. As for my mother, unlike me, she does not sweat ridiculously easily, so one bag travel is even easier for her. That said, for most of the trip including the flight, on her body she had the unbound leggings and a woman's crew neck. A side note for the women, these leggings are truly designed with travel in mind, featuring the substantial waistband with a seamless hidden full height zipper pocket, which, as you can see, fits a passport and wallet with ample room to spare. The rest of her going out clothes were in fact a mirrored set, these black unbound leggings and another merino t-shirt. For warmth, she brought along her North Face fleece, and to wrap up her clothing, since I forgot to borrow them for filming this overhead shot, let me cut to what I filmed in our hotel in Zurich. And she's very particular with her sleepwear, so she actually has kind of a, a few options for her sleep over here. So there's kind of like leggings, shorts, as well as a very comfortable t-shirt over here. She did not want to use a packing cube, so all of her clothing, socks, and undergarments got tucked into the bottom portion of her half of the packed travel backpack in a random drawstring bag. As for my own socks and underwear, I tested out one of the medium-sized packing cubes made by Packed, and in it, I brought six pairs of boxer briefs and six pairs of socks. A side tip, for any of you fellas who, like me, sweat easily and sweat a lot, getting thin, longer leg boxer briefs are a game changer to prevent chafing, and like everything else in this video, I have linked them down in the description in case you want to check them out for yourself. That closes out the first category of clothing, and now we can move on to the next category of tech. My mom's is easier, since the only tech she brought along with her was her iPhone, which just went into her purse. For me, even though this was a vacation to celebrate her long career, I still brought along my laptop, just in case I had to deal with any work-related emergencies. And my 13-inch MacBook Air slid easily into this padded compartment of the clamshell zipper lid. And for those of you who are curious, as you can see, my much larger and bulkier 16-inch MacBook Pro slides in easily. I typically bring more tech-related items for my business trips, which I didn't need to bring this time around, so all that was left in terms of tech were adapters, charging cables, and a power bank. My travel power bank of choice remains the Nightcore NB10K because of how slim and lightweight it is while still packing 10,000 mAh of juice. 
I brought two adapters, one universal and one dedicated J-Type for Switzerland, one for me and one for my mother. Both adapters have multiple USB ports, and I kept an iPhone cable permanently plugged into each, which both stayed on the top portions of our respective sides of the packed bag, since when the bag itself is closed, both compartments can still be accessed from the outside, so keeping them at the top made it easy to pull out our phone chargers to plug into the outlets on trains or at cafes. With tech out of the way, we can move on to hygiene. If you have seen my video on how I one bag travel for a six month multi-country business trip, which I'll link down in the description, you'll remember my preference for the Air Travel Kit too. I love it because it's flatter packing than most other DOP kits and has this hook to hang onto a towel rail or shower curtain for easy access while showering. My mother, on the other hand, doesn't own a DOP kit, and since I'm such an organization freak, I showed her some options and she chose the Alpaca Ghostling Mini so that she could use it as a DOP kit, but also on the off chance she felt her small purse was too limiting on day excursions, she could use it as a larger purse during the day. I have no idea what she packed in there, but me, I pack what I'd assume most people do. Any soaps in 100ml or smaller containers, but I do want to share something embarrassing that I pack that most don't, but some might consider. Like I already said a few times, I sweat so easily, and that includes my feet. So something I've started packing, especially after my long trip in the first half of the year in very hot and humid climates, is a small container of this Dr. Scholl's Odor X powder and a plastic bag. Every morning after showering and before heading out to explore, I squeeze a bit into the plastic bag, put my feet in the bag, stomp around, and then put my socks on. And I never have stinky, sweaty feet anymore. My air travel kit and the Alpaca Ghosting Mini my mom used go above the clothing on our respective sides of the backpack, and with that out of the way, we can move on to the last category of support, which includes items we rarely use but still deem necessary to pack along for those just-in-case moments. Most of my support goes into the Utility Pouch by Alpaca. Super basic first aid kit including a few sizes of band-aids, polysporin, alcohol wipes, and q-tips. A few sneaker wipes since the only shoes I wear when I travel are white leather sneakers for their versatility, which I clean with a damp napkin at the end of every day, but always bring a few sneaker wipes for major mishaps. Small items go into these three segmented zipper compartments like the SIM card tool for my iPhone for switching to a local SIM when abroad. The zipper compartment on the back exterior stores a few hundred US dollars as backup backup emergency cash, and the zipper compartment on the front would typically store a copy of my travel medical insurance policy. But since this particular trip was just shy of two weeks, my credit card includes emergency travel insurance for trips up to 15 days that were purchased with it, so this pocket remained empty for this trip. This support pouch goes into my half of the main backpack compartment, and the only other support items are our spare prescription glasses. Vision is obviously one of the most important things we do every day, and when traveling, it can be very difficult to get replacement prescription glasses. So I always bring a spare pair. Both mine and hers went into this magnetic closure box and stayed in her half of the backpack. Before zipping up, both my own rainproof shell and my mother's fleece get folded big and flat on top of everything on our respective sides, and both main compartments can get fully zipped up. With the bag zipped up, as you can see, there are three more exterior compartments, and all of them remained empty, including this gigantic, expandable, full-depth pocket. And I don't know if you can see, but it is completely empty, so in the event myself or my mother wanted to do any shopping, there is still ample room to bring things back as well. Now, some of you keen-eyed folks may have noticed in the corner of the hotel room footage that there was a large sling bag next to my hotel bed. If you have been with me for a bit, you know that for my passport and other travel everyday carry, I always bring a small sling or crossbody bag. This time, I brought a larger one to be able to protect and have quick access to my camera, but the net effect was the same. Zero checked luggage. And to give you a very clear visual representation of what this looked like in practical terms, here is everything me and my mom traveled with. A tiny purse for her, a sling for my EDC and camera, and this one carry-on backpack. That's it. Contrast that with my sister who flew in to join us partway through our trip. Look at this comparative nightmare. Here we are waiting for an expensive cab ride, all because her luggage would keep getting tripped up, struggling to roll on cobblestone walkway. Terrible. I love her to death, but boo. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Even though this video does not have a paid sponsor, Unbound Merino and Alpaca have all been kind enough to let me share a discount code with you. And you can find those secret codes down in the description. That being said, I am by no means saying these are the best tools for you. My goal for this video is less about the products and more about sharing just how easy travel 
traveling with one single carry-on is. But none of this does you any good if you aren't already prepped and organized with the most important travel items, and you will definitely want to check out these videos right over here. I'll leave them on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch. But while you're deciding, if you got value from this video, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop. And of course, for the video coming in a few weeks where I will be giving away one of these wonderful packed travel bags to one of you.